everyone, and welcome back to the program. I am here today with Janet. Janet, thank you so much for being connected here. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, ma'am. For Happy those who are here. not familiar with the work you are doing, let them know about yourself. So I'm a rapid transformational therapist. I work with mainly women in business and entrepreneurs who are suffering from imposter syndrome, are overwhelmed, feeling stressed, and just finding it difficult to cope. Imposter syndrome is this idea that we don't belong in the room we are, right? Is that more it, or less correct? It is. The underlying cause is not feeling good enough. So I actually find out where did that originate from? And as I said, it will always go back to childhood. Something was said or done that made you feel you know, that piece of work wasn't good enough or I'm not good enough. And you take that into adulthood. We talk about imposter syndrome. It, it definitely alters the way we live, right? The way we react, the way we actually view ourselves. How much does this go back to values and what we considered our non-negotiables? So growing up, so if, if I say to you that growing up around about the age of seven or eight, most of your beliefs about yourself are set. So if you believe that you're not good enough, when you go into the workplace, you may be, you may find yourself overworking or you could be procrastinating for a long time and then suddenly you've got a deadline and then there's the pressure to fulfill that commitment, for example. Um, you could also, you may be a bit of a people pleaser and you're trying to do everything yourself. You don't want to ask for help because reaching out and doing so may, uh, the boss may think that you're not coping, for example. So you're keeping it all to yourself. So every day, um, you're, you know, you're trying to keep everything going, but in, you're internalizing everything and it is a real struggle. I actually spoke to a lady, she worked for a corporate company for 25 years mm -hmm. and she said it was every single day she was waiting for that tap on her shoulder for somebody to say, you shouldn't be here, you know, bye. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so, you know, for the individual that's dealing with imposter syndrome, Right. Maybe they're a working mother, maybe they are a professional or a college student that feels like I'm way over my head with this particular class. What are some basic things that we could start implementing to actually overcome this idea that, like you mentioned, that person who's waiting for someone to tap you on the shoulder and say, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what you need to do is... It's how you perceive yourself is very different from how other people perceive you. So everyone thinks you're doing a great job, you're doing really well, but what you're not doing, you don't let in any compliments, any accomplishments. So what you need to do is ask yourself how you're feeling. If, if it went to court, <laughs> what, would, what would they say? You know, what's the truth? And I think having a look at what is actually going on, you know, what are, you, what are your beliefs? about yourself and then have a look at all your accomplishments or your achievements write them down everything you've ever achieved in your life and it is just changing and recognizing that negative voice in your head once it starts don't sort of um, check in with it you know just you know, reassure yourself that you are good enough um, what happens is is your neural pathway so the more you say to yourself, I'm an imposter and I'm not good enough. You're reinforcing those negative pathways. And I think it's just realizing that you're doing that um, and you can change them. I use hypnotherapy mm. um, and why I love it so much. I can very quickly find out how, why, where and when my client acquired their belief that they're not good enough. And then we can change it. We're looking at that belief that they formed as a child. We're now looking at it as an adult. And then they realize, oh, my goodness, that wasn't true. You know, and it could be something I've had clients, it's something as simple as um, they produce a very good piece of work at school and the teacher said, you must have cheated. This can't be yours. And that belief that it doesn't matter how much they try, how, you know, the, how well they produce um, a piece of work, it, they're called out as a fraud. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and so we carry that into adulthood. And, and so now it becomes more of a of a trait as opposed to just an experience. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we just run on that outdated program. And, you know, it's crazy that we update our mobiles, we update our laptops, but we don't update our mindset. Mm. You know, when I say to people, would you let your five-year-old 
run your adult life. They're like, no, of course I wouldn't. But that's what we're doing every day because 97% of the time, all our beliefs, uh, past experiences, all our emotions are run from our subconscious mind. And that is huge. That, that is a very good illustration of as a father of three. So my oldest is nine, my middle child is seven, and I have a three-year-old. Like I would not let either of them <laughs> control my life. <laughs> and I yet it's it's that one, it's that one experience, either at seven or or three or nine or whatever the age was, where it's like we're letting that individual, that version of ourselves essentially dictate how high or how far we can go. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's quite a scary thought, actually. Yeah. And it's, it's an automatic reaction. So when I say, you know, we're on autopilot every day, um, if you're doing the school run back and forth, have you, you know, ever just arrived and you don't remember signaling, stopping at the traffic lights, indicating, you just arrive. That's autopilot. And we go in and out of a state of hypnosis every day throughout the day. In, in this particular challenge of imposter syndrome of do I belong, do I not belong, is journaling something? I mean, it sounds like journaling can be something that's really powerful if I'm taking inventory every day of what's happening in my life. Yeah, absolutely. And I like to, so if somebody's in a work environment and they think everything has to be perfect all the time, you know, that's going to put a lot of pressure on themselves and then they will get behind with their work and then they get overwhelmed, overloaded. So journaling certainly helps. Um, I love visualization as well. Um, you know, to visualize that everything that they can know that a piece of work's good enough. You know, people around them will say that's great, but they'll go one step further to make it even more perfect. And then it starts to go drastically wrong. And as I said, that pressure builds up even more. At the beginning of the year, most often individuals are setting New Year's resolutions. And so they, they have all these goals that they want to accomplish. Other yeah. individuals, as opposed to doing that, will set out a word for the year. This word will anchor everything they do in the year. My question to you is, where do you lie in that spectrum? Are you more of a writing down goals or a word of the year type of person? Um, writing down goals certainly works better. Um, unfortunately, New Year's resolution, uh, resolutions don't always work. And what I say to clients is, you know, why do you want to achieve something? So, for example, um, somebody would say, I want a better paid job. But why? Oh, to buy a bigger house. But why do you want the bigger house? Oh, so that I can have relatives come from abroad and stay. You know, really dig deep into why are you doing it? And is it something you're passionate about? You know, did you fall into a particular career? Were you, you know, expected to be a doctor, for example? Um, you know, are you are you following your heart's desire and your passion or are you living somebody else's life? So you say you fall more into the side of writing on the goals and and I, I suppose that kind of lines up with the journaling as well. Right. Yeah. The reviewing and, and, and making sure everything is clear. My question to you is, if there was one word that you could use to encapsulate your life's work, what would that one word be? Empowerment. That's yeah. a powerful I, word. I say to my clients, you know, you've got all the answers to all of your problems in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So all I do is help my clients access their subconscious to find out how, why, where, and when, you know, their issue came from. And then you can resolve it. And it isn't difficult. For those individuals that are listening and would love to get connected with you, how could they do so? Um, through my website, um, which is www drjanetgabrieltherapy.com. And of course, you work with women that are facing imposter syndrome as they navigate the business world or just try to become a better overall individual. Yeah, and I mean, feeling not good enough is huge. Um, I went to Tony Robbins um, to see him in London a few years ago, and he asked an audience of almost 13,000 people who in the room doesn't feel good enough. And most people put their hands up. I was quite mm. shocked. Just yeah. how many. So, and the thing is with imposter syndrome, it can appear worse the more successful you are because you're becoming more visible. And the other thing, it can hold you back in your career because you don't want to start a new job because, again, you know, you are visible. 
and you're trying to prove yourself in a new position. Yeah, oftentimes I think when we talk about success, we think about the good part of it. And that's a good way to present the the other side of it, maybe considered yeah. the bad side of, of success, where it's like, well, the, the higher you are in achieving things, if you haven't resolved these things in your life, the more yeah. you're going to think, I don't belong there or I don't yeah. deserve it. I actually Googled um, famous people with imposter syndrome. Meryl Streep was one. Uh, Michelle Obama was another. Mm-hmm. She actually gave um, a talk in a London yes. school. about. Not I saw doing- that. I saw that, yeah. So all the you know the people you think are doing incredibly well, they're at the top of their game, have this underlying fear that they're not good enough, and actually think I think it was Jennifer Lopez actually thought of giving up her career because somebody had tweeted that she couldn't sing, hmm. and she was doubting herself anyway. So it it would be running in the background, and you'd never know when it's going to rear its ugly head. And we all suffer from imposter syndrome, or most of us at some time in our life, especially uh, when changing career or starting a new business, for example. Awesome. I appreciate you so much, Janet. And definitely it is empowering. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you.